Welcome to the second part of the second video. We will talk about inflow and outflow objects. These object types are easy to understand. Inflow objects will add fluid to the simulator, while outflow objects will remove fluid. How much fluid will be emitted and how much removed depends on the dimensions of these objects. If both objects have the same dimensions, the much fluid will be removed as emitted. If the outflow object is smaller than the inflow object, fluids will fill the domain box. It's also possible to animate inflow and outflow objects to leave the domain box, what will have the same effect as resizing them. Let's make some experiments with them. Add a cube and make it a domain. Scale it to look like this one and rename it to domain. Let's add a UV sphere and scale and place it to the upper left in a way the domain box will cut it. You remember? Objects or object parts outside of a domain will be cutted. Just what's inside the domain will be simulated. Make it an inflow object and rename it to inflow. Duplicate this sphere and move it to the middle of the ground, but keep it being on top of the ground to not be cutted. And then make it an outflow object and rename it to outflow. There are some options you can choose from. Enables can be animated to switch an outflow on and off. It's the same effect like moving it outside the domain. Remove fluid tells the simulator to remove fluid on contact, like you have seen in the previous videos. Remove white water tells the simulator to remove white water particles on contact. Interesting is that both settings are not connected. You can let an outflow object remove white water particles without removing fluid and the opposite side too. To test this, select the domain and open the white water panel. Click Enable White Water Simulation. When this has been enabled, the simulator will generate particles like foam, bubbles, spray and more. I'm going to explain all white water settings in another video. Just leave all settings to their defaults and hit Bake. Also, enable Auto Load Bake Frames from the toolshelf to see the progress of simulation live. To make white water particles visible in the 3D viewport, click on Preview in the toolshelf. This will make sure the for the viewport visible particles will be reduced to maximal 5%. Then you can open the Flip Fluid Display Settings panel, then White Water Display Settings, and then uncheck the Hide Particles in Viewport checkbox. If you would uncheck this box without setting the viewport to show the preview cache, Blender could crash. To see how white water particles will be removed by the outflow object, just disable the fluid surface to become invisible. And switch to the top view. You can clearly see that particles will be deleted inside the outflow sphere. Enable the fluid surface to become visible and you see that the fluids also will be deleted by the outflow sphere. The lower our simulation resolution is, the lower is the quality. And when talking about deleting, this does not mean to be a boolean operation, because that would mean to cut a hole into the fluids, but the outflow does more than cutting. It really removes fluid like cutting a hole into the domain. And by the way, isn't it great that we can work on our scene while the fluids are being simulated? There's no need to wait for baking to be finished. Ok, so let's stop and reset the baking cache. Then select the outflow sphere. Disable remove fluid. Select the domain again and click on Bake. 
you will see that the outflow object does not remove any fluid. And when making the fluid surface invisible again, you can see that white water particles still will be removed as long as they are inside the outflow sphere. But as a domain is being filled by fluids, white water over and around the outflow sphere still will be there. Ok, stop and reset the cache again. And let's disable white water simulation for the next test. While the outflow sphere is selected, enable remove fluid again. And don't forget to re-enable fluid surface in the outliner to become visible. Let's think about that inverse checkbox. When this is enabled, everything around the outflow object becomes an outflow object. But the object itself will no longer remove fluids. In theory, this would mean that our domain will become an outflow object and the inflow object's emitted fluid will directly be removed. We could place the inflow object into the inverted outflow object to see how this will work. So make the outflow sphere bigger and move the inflow sphere inside. Place it by half inside and by the other half above. Then hit bake. As you can see, only what's inside the inverted outflow will be visible. Everything around works as outflow now. The export settings are the same, we have explained in the first part of this video. There's no more to tell you about outflows for now, so let's get over to inflow objects. Create a new scene. As always, I'll add a cube as domain for our scene. And I'll add a sphere as inflow placed in the left middle above the domain's ground. We begin with substep emissions. This thing will help you to get smoother motion. To see an effect, we need a fast moving inflow object. So make sure you are on frame 1 and set a keyframe for location. Then jump to frame 10 and move the sphere to the right. Set a new location keyframe here. Select the domain box and hit bake. When checking the first 10 frames, you can see that steps. This is because the inflow object moves that fast from the left to the right. We can make it smoother by increasing the value for substeps. Reset the cache and jump back to frame 1. Select the sphere and in the substep emissions field type in 4. Select the domain again and bake again. The higher you choose that value to be, the longer baking will take. And as you can see, when checking frame 1 to 10, the steps are gone. Now, let us add some velocity to the Z direction to shoot fluids upwards. Reset the cache again. Jump to frame 1. Select the sphere and try a Z value of 8. Then bake again. Cool! Velocity works great and will give you some creative ideas for your animation. But why are there steps again? It's because substep emissions will be calculated for the inflow object itself, but not for the accelerated fluid. Smoothing the fluid's motion is not part of the inflow object, but part of the simulation calculation itself. Select the domain and open the Flip Fluid Advanced Settings panel. This is a place to make additional settings to change the way the simulator works. All the settings here are part of another video. For this video, 
The frame substeps value is interesting. Change its minimum to 3 and rebake the theme. The same here, the higher you choose this value to be, the longer baking will take. And when checking the simulation, we see how smooth the simulation became, just by changing two values. Let's stop and reset baking for the next experiment. While the sphere is selected, check the other settings. Manual and target gives the fluid's velocity in a direction. You can type in values for x, y, z or use target and select an object. When using a target object, it's required to set a speed value bigger than zero. Otherwise, you won't see anything. This has been explained in the first part of this video and works the same way with fluid objects velocity settings. So I'll skip these and talk about add object velocity to inflow. We will change the animation a bit to make velocity better visible. Jump to the second keyframe of your animation and move the sphere to the middle of the domain box to set a new location keyframe there. Enable the checkbox for add object velocity to inflow and hit bake. Great! This feature made the fluid behave more like it would in the real world. When braking, the fluid will be accelerated in the braking direction. How intensive this works can be adjusted using the influence value. One is a good default. There are two more fields called rigid and deformable. While deformations are noticed by the simulator in general, deformable will make the simulator take notice of them to take them into account in the calculations for velocity and acceleration. This means, for example, when an inflow would have keyframes for its size, the resizing would be used for accelerating the fluid. The deformable feature will be removed in newer add-on versions because the simulator is able to detect deformations without setting it up to look for this. At last we will talk about constraint fluid velocity. For what this feature is required will be visible when baking has been finished. Ok, as you can see, the domain will be filled by the sphere. But for some reason it stops filling at a point. It seems the domain does not become more full. And yes, that's correct. This is because of submerging the inflow. We need a spatial separation of the inflow and the fluid to get this working. When thinking about the real world, we would use a pump and a pipe to fill up the domain. And this is what we should try for our simulation. So, let's reset the cache. And add a cylinder as pipe somewhere here, where the spheres stop to move. In edit mode, delete the upper face and then add a solidify modifier to it and make it thick enough. One hint here, the lower your simulation resolution is, the thicker an obstacle's wall need to be to become watertight. Ok, and as we are talking about obstacles, make the pipe one. Make sure the fluid will not touch the bottom of the inflow by surrounding it with the pipe. And rename it to pipe and switch it to be displayed as wireframe. Select the sphere and enable constraint fluid velocity. When this has been enabled, I recommend to use a lower value for inflow velocity. So let's change it to 6 and then hit bake. Fantastic! The domain becomes more and more full. This technique has been used in our filling sphere animation. You will find this blend file on our learning page. Ok, but what would happen if the pipe would not surround the inflow sphere? Let's check this. Abort and reset baking. Move the pipe up so it's placed in the half of the sphere and hit bake.
Filling the domain works much slower. This is because the fluid gets contact to the inflow object. The comparison shows you how important it is to have a special separation of fluids and the inflow object. And this comparison shows you what effect constraint fluids velocity has when not using it to fill something. You can read more about this in our documentation. Okay, that was all about inflow and outflow objects. We hope it was helpful for you. Enjoy our add-on and goodbye.